Vascasius Redbertus, was born in 786 and was left abandoned at a Benedictine convent in Soissons, France. At a young age, Vascasius entered the Benedictine monastery of Corby, near Amiens. He was ordained a deacon, but, like Francis of Assisi, felt unworthy to be ordained a priest. Vascasius devoted his life to study and writing, and eventually became novice master. He also helped to found a new monastery in Westphalia, and later became the abbot at Corbe in 843. He resigned his office ten years later due to opposition to his reforms and his writings. He took up residence at another monastery, but eventually returned home to Corbe, where he died around 860. He wrote many books and scripture commentaries, but his most famous work is De Corpore et Sanguine Domini, On the Body and Blood of the Lord. Completed in 833, it was rejected by some, but eventually approved by Pope Sylvester II. De Corpore et Sanguine Domini was the first book written to explain the nature of the Eucharist. Though not using the term transubstantiation, his work set the course for that doctrine, which was eventually adopted by the Fourth Lateran Council in 1215. That in truth the body and blood are created by the consecration of the mystery, no one doubts who believes the divine words, when the truth says, for my flesh is truly food, and my blood is truly drink. And that when his disciples did not rightly understand, he clearly identified what flesh he meant, and what blood. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood, abides in me, and I in him. Therefore, if it is truly food, it is true flesh, and if it is truly drink, it is true blood. How else will what he says be true, the bread which I shall give, my flesh, is for the life of the world, unless it be true flesh? And the bread which came from heaven, true bread? But because it is not right to devour Christ with the teeth, he willed in the mystery, that this bread and wine be created truly his flesh and blood, through consecration by the power of the Holy Spirit, by daily creating it, so that it might be mystically sacrificed for the life of the world. It is an evil madness that there be in the minds of the faithful any doubt that the substance of the bread and the wine which are placed upon the altar become the body and blood of Christ through the priestly mystery and the action of grace, God doing it through his divine grace and secret power. This oblation is repeated every day, even though Christ suffered only once in the flesh, and by one and the same deadly suffering, saved the world, and after rising from death to life was no longer subject to death. Therefore, because we fall every day, every day, Christ is mystically immolated for us, and the passion of Christ is handed on in mystery. And as by dying once, he overcame death. So daily, he forgives the sins that return through this sacrament of his body and blood. Blood and water flowed from the side of Christ when his passion was accomplished. The apostles understood this mystery, and ordained that it be done also in the chalice. In that way, nothing of those things done on the cross for our redemption would be lacking in this sacrament which commemorated the Passion. The words of Christ, since they are divine, are efficacious, and can produce nothing other than what they command. For they are eternal. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words will not pass away. You ask me for the solution of this question, which many believe doubtful. Since they do not understand well, let them at least believe the words of the Savior, who being true God, cannot lie. Therefore, when Christ says, This is my body, or my flesh, and this is my blood, as I see it he does not mean to speak of another flesh that is not his very own, which was born of the Virgin Mary, and nailed to the cross, nor of some other blood different than was poured out on the cross, and until then circulated in his veins. 
Truly, this is the same flesh of Christ that was crucified and buried. And this is true of the sacrament of this flesh, which is realized and consecrated by the priest at the altar, with the words of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. Don't be shocked, poor mortal, and don't look here for the ordinary course of nature. But if you truly believe that this flesh was formed in the virginal womb of Mary by the power of the Holy Spirit, then also believe that what is realized on the altar by the word of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit is the body of Christ, who was born of the Virgin.